Okay, so the GFR, standard GFR, uh, average GFR in healthy people is 120 20 milliliter per minute. Then filtration pressure, and we have to yet talk about filtration pressure. Soon after this, we will talk about filtration pressure. Soon after this. But at this time, I'm just going to use the value. Let's say 8 millimeter of mercury is the net filtration pressure. So that means how much is the filtration coefficient now? Filtration coefficient will be 1, 5 milliliter per minute per millimeter of mercury for 300 grams of renal substance. Where did I pull the 300 gram of renal substance from? This is very important. This filtration coefficient is for both the kidneys. So both the kidneys, right? One kidney is about 150 grams. We are talking about GFR for both the kidneys. We're talking about the net filtration pressure in both the kidneys, in uh, actually net filtration pressure per glomerulus. The end result is we have to sum the, the weight here. So 150 and 150 milligrams equals 300 grams. So we say 300 gram of the renal substance has a coefficient of 15 milliliter. Normally, now this is the trick area, nursing students, USMLE students, doctors, normally they want you to know filtration coefficient for 100 grams of a substance. So here it's very simple. If we have 15 for 300, for 300, then for 100, it will be 300 divided by 3. That would make it 100. So that means 15 divided by 3 equals 5. So 5 milliliter per minute per millimeter of mercury pressure per 100 gram of kidney substance is the filtration coefficient. That is the filtration coefficient. This filtration coefficient is 400 times higher than the filtration coefficient for the remaining body, for the other substances in the body. So if you look at the capillaries in other parts of the bodies, these capillaries in the other part of the body, their filtration coefficient, means their surface area and their permeability, is 400 times lesser. Their permeability is for surface area is actually more than the kidney. Their permeability is so less that surface area for a 100 gram multiplied with the permeability for the 100 gram of a substance. So that means if I take 100 gram of a substance from here and I see the glomerular capil uh, capillaries there, the surface area and permeability multiplied for that is going to be about 0 0.01, 0 0.01 milliliter, uh, millimeter per millimeter of mercury per 100 gram. So remember this, that the, that the, um, what is that? Filtration coefficient of kidney is very high, 400 times higher than the remaining body. And this is because kidney is doing a function which is continuously processing the urine. Okay, cool. So we are out. We are done with the filtration coefficient. Let's talk about the net filtration pressure. So I'm going to clean up this area a little bit so we can talk about the net filtration pressure. So, proximal convoluted tubules, Bowman space, then peritubular capillaries. So now we're going to talk about the net filtration pressure. What are the factors which create the net filtration pressure. So before we talk about the factors, the very first thing, what does net filtration pressure mean? What that means is that when the fluids arrive in the glomerulus, when the fluid arrive in the glomerulus, question is, will the fluid move from the glomerulus to the Bowman space? How much will it move? Will it move from Bowman space back to the glomerulus? If so, what would happen? What is normal? What is not normal? So it's very simple. What happens is, if you consider that glomeruli capillaries, which these are, then you should know that fluids normally move out of capillaries. So we would want the fluid to move out of the glomerulus into the Bowman space. That is a normal, that is the end result which we want. If we want that, that would simply mean the forces which move the fluid out should be more here and less here. 
That's the simplest way to remember this. The fluid needs to move from the glomerulus into the Bowman space. The forces, that means the forces which move the fluid should be more here than here. So let's talk about what are those forces. You must have read these forces as part of the capillary hydrostatics and hemodynamics too. So let, let me just quickly review them. The forces in a capillary which move the fluids out are plasma on cortic pressure. So let's say this is a plasma protein. The pressure exerted by protein to pull the fluid towards itself is called the oncotic pressure. How is that oncotic pressure exerted? What does a protein do to do this? Remember, proteins have number one charges on them. That is one. Remember the factors. Do not forget those factors. Because these factors are what are going to cause the pathological conditions and you'll have to, as a doctor or a nursing student or a, or a health professional, you'll have to know this to understand what's happening with the patient. Remember, at the end of the day, we want to have the GFR changes in our mind, right? At the end of the day, we want to understand what happens to the GFR. And GFR was dependent upon filtration coefficient. We have talked about it. Now we're talking about net filtration pressure. Remember, there were two things here, surface area, total surface area, and permeability. There are four factors here. The four factors are what we're talking about. So the very first fact factor we're talking about is glomerular capillary on cortic pressure. This is also written like this. Pi, pi is the on cortic pressure symbol for the glomerular capillary. So glomerular capillary, glomerular capillary on cortic pressure. What that oncotic pressure means, this is really just the oncotic pressure exerted by the proteins, and that is what we're talking about right now. This will be very useful. This will be day-to-day -day changes. You eat more proteins, all of a sudden the oncotic pressure changes. I said coefficient is not going to change on a day-to-day basis. This will. So you have to continue. You have to understand this. The so oncotic pressure of a protein is exerted by two mechanisms. We're talking about the proteins running, in, running around in the plasma. One is the proteins themselves are charged. They have multiple amino acids in them and various amino acids are either neutral or positive or negative in their behavior. So those charges would appear. These charges attract water. These charges attract water. Water loves polar things. So that is a pull on water by a protein. Remember, what is the biggest sponge in our body? What is the biggest sponge which pulls the water towards the albumin? Albumin is called a sponge in the body. Why? It attaches to the water. It keeps the water with it. Who are other friends of water? So proteins are friends of water. They attach it. Sodium is friend of water. Chloride is friend of water and so on. Sodium also moves water with it. Other reason for oncotic pressure is the Donnan effect. What is the Donnan effect? Donnan effect is that attached to protein are going to be ions. For example, sodium is attached here. Now, sodium itself is a friend of water. So, sodium is then going to have water attached to that. This is called the Donnan effect, I believe. So, protein itself attracts water and then the uh, chemical substances attached to the protein also. If these are charged and polar, these would also attach to the water. So, that makes up the oncotic pressure. So, back here when the fluids are, when the plasma is coming in, plasma has of course proteins. Those proteins have gotten the oncotic pressure. So that oncotic pressure is one factor. Now what is it going to do? Oncotic pressure is going to try to keep the water in here. You can say it this way that if water is here, it's going to pull the water out. But normally there is enough water here that it's going to just keep the water. Now the question is if the water proteins are pulling the water here, will that water move? No, water will not move. So we say this is a, this is a force which keeps water here. And now if the arrow goes from here to here, doesn't mean it is pulling the water. It really is at this time just keeping the water in this area. So that is a reverse force, right? What is the normal value of the oncotic pressure? The normal value of the oncotic pressure is about 27 millimeter of mercury. So that is the oncotic pressure. Then hydrostatic pressure, the bigger force, the pressure here of the fluids themselves. Remember the hydrostatic pressure is defined as the pressure exerted on the lateral capillary walls or lateral vessel walls or tube by due to the fluids inside.